Welcome. The Let's Play Rule the Ways 2 as France, starting in 1920. This is episode 20, and we've been diplomatically bounced into a surprise war with the USA. Last few months, tensions have rocketed up, and it hasn't given me time to prepare my fleet as I would usually like. Usually, I'd have an exercise and use that to improve crew quality. So my fleet is a bit all over the place. I have some elite ships that I kept on active status um, throughout the peacetime from the war with the Soviet Union. Great. I have a lot who are fair quality, who were in reserve. And I have a lot, particularly some of the older battleships that are poor quality, that have just popped out of mothballs. Be interesting to see how that impacts the uh, the battles that we're going to fight. My strategy, such as it is, is to make the Americans come to us. They're the touchy ones who suddenly flounced off into war just because I issued an ultimatum. So I'm not going to try initially, at least, to um, go and send forces out towards America, with the exception that I hope my smaller than I'd hoped submarine force uh, has an impact. So they have to send their forces over to me. That they don't have the bases over here, so eventually their crew quality will go down. So yeah, I'm hoping that will be enough. We have the problem that I'm still almost minus 3,000 in my monthly balance. So I'm probably going to have to cut down a bit on my ship construction, but I have about five turns before that becomes a significant problem. So I'm sort of going to cross fingers around that and hope that it solves itself. Let's go have a look at what the battle generator is offering us first time round. And lo, it's a fleet battle <laughs> straight off. Remember, the Americans have a battle force that's almost twice as big. So in the available forces, you'll notice that we have our full fleet. Uh, they have an estimated four battleships and a battle cruiser and a few bits and bobs. So I'm going to accept that and see if they accept it. They've declined. <laughs> They've declined. So good decline. Um, so that's already a bit of a victory. I'm particularly fearing, I think, cruiser battles because they have an overwhelming cruiser force uh, against mine. So here's a coastal raid in the Philippines. They may have a battleship. So let's accept this. Swap over to the battle screen. Here I have one good old fashioned 25 knot cruiser. It's really just a colonial ship. I am supposed to sink two ships with this. So that would be lucky. Let's look at the time. Dusk will be in 35 minutes, so it's going to be a night engagement. Well, OK, let's see how this goes. OK, there we're into dusk. Nothing so far. Let's run towards the point. See if we see anything and we see something. Let's just zoom in. And it's just a normal everyday unidentified ship. Mm -hmm. Could be anything. Now, the Algier ought to have decent crew quality. Ah, right. <laughs> well, double check that. Uh, crew quality is zero. Mm, okay, so they're not elite. So let's shy away from that and see if we can disappear. Right, we've disappeared. So obviously, it might not have been a heavy cruiser, but the Americans do love their cruisers. See, give it one more chance. I might just have to abandon this battle as 
I, I probably should have declined actually, as this is not necessarily an easy thing for me. I'm going to head up towards Manila. Let's go back down to 20 knots. And let's go fast. Slip by Corregidor, which the Americans don't seem to have fortified, into Manila Bay. Turn through and come back out again. Let's pop down to cruise and just go back to that rendezvous point. See if anything else appears that might be an interesting target. Uh, oh, well, we're running out of time. Ooh, and there's daylight. So daylight definitely suggests we probably want to return back or French territory. And that's going to be it. Now, I probably should sort of memo to self, don't go around accepting battles here because most of my force here in the uh, Southeast Asia is only corvettes. So yeah, one cruiser light, one cruiser heavy, four auxiliaries. Let's just see ship details. Who were we up against? The Salt Lake City. Uh, yeah, nine ten-inch guns against my paltry six-inch guns. So that would not have gone well. My only advantage is they didn't have any torpedoes. So, ah, there again, some victory points for me not. So I suppose I've halved the victory point loss, but still, it probably wasn't worth the risk. And a new breakthrough. It's been a poor research year this year. We're in October and we've only had three. They've invaded the Antilles. Well, fair enough. Um, there's nothing we could have done. Uh, oops. <laughs> That is the disadvantage of going on um, unrestricted, but still, seems a bit uh, unhelpful to have lost one immediately. Enemy subject and torpedoed one of our cruisers. And they've sunk a destroyer, a corvette. Well, <laughs> despite them having a smaller submarine force than me, they seem to be definitely enjoying the, um, the submarine war. I'm just going to lower my intelligence against the British. The Italians are pretty, pretty cross about something. Our uh, Joff new fleet carrier is only three months away. So we should just be able to go back into the black here. A uh, small engagement. Our forces are 20 float planes. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to decline that. And another breakthrough. A new flying boat. Yeah, significantly longer range from 445 to over 500 and a slight, yeah, that's an easy yes. So they are raiding in Southeast Asia. They sink a ship. That's, that's not gonna do very much. There is every risk that this might be a long war. I wonder if uh, the Germans are going to soak up uh, any of the attention here because obviously they've got colonies too. So that's it for the end of the year. Let's just have a look, see how we did. So struggling again with our finances, our, uh, our funds dipping down into nearly nothing, bouncing up and then this war suddenly pushing them back down again. Um, the amount of expenses we're running and whoosh up into war all time high. So yeah, expecting this to come down um, with the completion of the Schaff and then the uh, completion of the Liberté uh, after that. So that's all still going. Very few texts this year. The tensions just went through the roof. Um, really, we went from five, six or something through to full blown war with just two steps. Uh, you know, sometimes the game 
runs you just underneath war for ages and ages and ages. The Americans must have been very touchy. Budget obviously has leapt up from 415 to over 500, which is a wartime thing. And here, we just need to make sure that we don't annoy the British with the unrestricted warfare. Otherwise, that's all going well. So let's see what the 1933 is going to bring. They want to have another cruiser action in the Philippines. <sighs> okay, we'll try it one more time. Probably folly. Oh, they've declined. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of declining in this. Enemy fleet dominates. Yeah, what are you going to do? So again, one merchant ship lost, so nothing. Well done, Germany, for adding a few. Just checking here. Nothing really of note. So this could be a long war. It could be a very indecisive war, particularly if the Americans refuse to have a fleet action in Northern Europe. Uh, they want to have battles everywhere, except for where I want to have a battle. Yeah. 20 battleships and 7 battlecruisers against 20 aeroplanes. No. Messerschmitt 115. Good. New fighter. That will be helping. Well done, forces fighting the Antilles, and there's nothing I can do to help you. Right. Gain. 220 victory points for blockades of enemy. Well, that's unexpected. So it would seem that our submarines are doing the job. I'm not sure how that works. Let's go to the map. Balance of forces here. The Germans, bless, have sent some ships. Actually, in the Yes, the Americans seem to have sent their whole fleet into the Caribbean, leaving their east coast wide open, and the Germans have managed to um, put them into a blockade. This could be a random war. And another little engagement between their things and mine. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll accept this, but I, I might rush through it just in case it's absolute nonsense. Or oh, the Americans decline. <laughs> Hooray for the Joff. Dixmond enters the yard with engine problems. I thought I'd had a technology that um, meant these kind of breakdowns were less common. Our first research breakthrough and another of our Corvettes dies. We sink a submarine, well done. A couple of raiders now, but not doing anything of note. So the blockade has disappeared. Obviously, the Americans have redeployed their fleet. And I'm noticing tensions with the Soviet Union have risen. Uh, they've actually calmed down with uh, Britain. They've gone from yellow to, uh, to olive green. Another of these weird battles, which I'm going to accept. Um, Okay. Well, I don't know whether the army is going to have an offensive, but I certainly can't afford to have fewer resources, even for a limited time. We're only just in the black with the uh, commissioning of the Joff. Speaking of which, uh, I need to put some airplanes on it. And another destroyer bites the dust. So yeah, let me just adjust my air groups. So our funds are just starting to recover. Levite is a month away. So actually I can uh, resume construction of democracy. Um, obviously it's a, a year off. I could build some other stuff. I'm, I'm thinking submarines, but you know, the big boys that could reach America take 16 months. So we'll go with the battleship for now, just in case this turns out to be a very long war. And once Liberty is out of shipyard hands, we will think about what else we might be able to build. They want to fight everywhere except for where I want to fight.
Mm-hmm. Miss Algeria is going to have a very busy war. Let's see. Um, it's daylight. N- dusk in 50 minutes. We don't have any objectives. The old unknown ship sighted. So let's go up to maximum speed and let's turn away. Oh, okay. It says it's only an American Corvette. So we'll have that. We don't need to go quite so fast. Ah, did I say Corvette? No, no, I meant light cruiser. And a 31 knot light cruiser with um, more torpedoes and things. Right. Well, thank goodness dusk is coming and our base is up there. So uh, let's go back up to maximum speed and see if we can't run away. Voila. Yeah, this is going to be very, very tricky. Uh, let's just go down to cruise because I can see we already took a bit of damage. 12 medium hits, five light hits. So hooray for uh, operating close to our bases. Uh, they won ever so slightly. Did we manage to uh, hit them at all? 10 medium hits. Oh, okay, guys, well done. I could have challenged it a bit more, but it was definitely a uh, much more modern light cruiser. Hooray for Liberté. Now the Marengo is in for engine problems. Um, they are picking up a few VPs from these cruisers being a bit rubbish. Nah, I was, I was just thinking, should I tempt fate and send some of mine? We've got some victory points from a blockade of the enemy, so I imagine the Americans have moved away from the East Coast again. If we have a look at our fleet status, I'm noticing that most of our ships now are good, fair, good, fair, good. Obviously, Liberté is still working up. A couple of elites in the heavy cruisers. So we've mainly moved out of poor and into fair, which is good to know. Mm -hmm. With even only the democracy under construction, we're still in minus. I think that's because working up costs uh, an extra maintenance as well. And we'll just have to watch that. Insufficient ships on foreign stations. So let's say no to that. Right, let me just have a look at my colonial force. Okay, I've sent a couple of minesweepers to Southeast Asia, but I've kept them on active fleet. So it's gonna take them a few months to arrive. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put one of these Doucet class battleships onto foreign station, if that does anything. The old colonial for defense. So nothing there. Joffre has finished working up. Uh, I'm not gonna fill up my Mediterranean air bases with airplanes. The Americans haven't made a move against the Mediterranean, so I was right to take out my fleet from the Med and put it into Northern Europe. Nice to see some argy bargy in Kamchatka. One of our submarines. So I'm going to redeploy my submarines because he seems to be making merry with his presumably on fleet support. It's hard to know. Whereas mine aren't really, I can, so far as I can see, making any enemy merchant ships sunk seven. Well, you know, it's not going to send the world alight. 
So let's go to fleet support. And that also curtails the risk of bringing anyone else into the war if I go around sinking the odd liner. So we're six months into this war. It's been a bit of a phony war. I really wish the Americans had accepted the first fleet battle in Northern Europe, but they didn't because I could have crushed them. I might have a little think about, do I send a task force over to North America, to the East Coast? Perhaps a carrier and fast battleship force and see how that does. I think that would be interesting. My submarines have failed to have an impact and the Americans have failed to put their head on the chopper for me to cut it off. So I'm going to bring this episode to a close just now and join me soon for the second half or the second half of this year uh, of this war to see how it unpacks. It's, it's a very different kind of war than the sort that I normally fight. So you may notice I'm trying to find my way around it into something that's helpful. Please leave a comment if you've got a bright idea. Always welcome and open to those. So for now, thanks for watching and stay safe.